Choice is great, but it can be overwhelming. And there's definitely such a thing as too much choice. That's why you've heard somebody order a tall latte, extra hot, skinny, with oat milk, must be from Brazil, served in a paper cup and allowed to cool back down to room temperature. God, I love being behind that person in the queue. And investing is no different. There is loads of choice. There's more companies that you can invest in than there are options for your hot drink. So in today's video, we are going to be looking at how to pick stocks. Hello everyone, my name is Tom Morgan from the YouTube channel That Finance Show. I'm a UK-based, fully qualified financial planner and advisor, and today I'm coming to you in collaboration with the good people from Trading212, who want to help you get smarter and better when it comes to investing. Remember, nothing in this video should be construed as financial advice. The first lesson when it comes to picking stocks is that you don't have to. If you're brand new to investing and think you need to bury yourself in the financial times and company balance sheets to find the next big thing, then you're wrong. There are a great range of funds available on Trading212 where your money is pulled together with other investors and invested in a whole range of different assets based on what the fund invests into. All you need to do is choose your fund. Let's say you fancy investing in the 500 largest companies in the US. Then buy yourself an S&P tracker fund like VUSA, for example. There you go, no stock picking required. If, however, you are a bit more like our tall, extra hot latte drinking friend and you want more control over the components that go into your portfolio, then you're going to need to find some companies to invest into. But how do you choose? Let me give you some ideas to get you going. One, think about the economy. What's going on in the world? Sometimes the economy is growing, sometimes it's shrinking. Learning what types of stocks tend to do well in different scenarios can be a useful start. If all is rosy in the garden, people tend to be optimistic and enjoy spending money. And so you might look to invest in what are known as cyclical companies like travel and leisure or aerospace companies. But if times are tough, luxuries like that foreign holiday or new car tend to go out of the window. This might lead you to look at what are known as defensive stocks. These are businesses whose product is needed by people regardless of what the economy is up to. Great examples being pharmaceuticals or supermarkets. Two, what does the future look like? Look long term and think about how the world is changing. Can you find businesses that are well positioned to take advantage of this? Technology will surely play a big role, so who's making the next gadget that will change our lives? Talking of lives, people are living a lot longer too, so the healthcare sector is likely to be an ever-growing place. And what about climate change? Do we all need electric cars? Three, buy what you know. What stuff do you buy that you can't live without? Maybe it is that ludicrous coffee. Well, where do you buy it from and why choose them over all the others? Legendary investor Peter Lynch said, know what you own and why you own it. And he meant it. He loved the donuts so much at Dunkin' Donuts that he invested in them. Maybe sit down and think of the last three things you bought, big or small. What was your experience? What made you buy it? Okay, so those are some general ideas to get you started off down a path, but how do you decide which companies to invest in and which to avoid? Well, when researching stocks to buy, there are two main styles of research, quantitative and qualitative. God, imagine how many takes that took me to try and get right. I'm gonna really enjoy having to say those two words throughout the rest of this video. <laughs> quantitative research has become a lot more popular since the birth of computers, as it's all about numbers and statistics. These researchers are not so bothered about who's steering the company or what gives the product its edge over its competitors. They are just looking at the pure maths. They're looking at financial ratios like price to earnings ratios and discounted cash flows. The challenge here is there is so much information to sift through, it's really easy to simply be paralysed by all the different options. After all, remember the saying, there's lies, damn lies and then statistics? Choosing the right measures to use for your research is key here, so you're going to want to do some research and get familiar with these different ratios, terms and stats. An example here on the Trading212 app. This is electric car giant's Tesla. If you scroll down, you'll see key ratios, market cap, PE ratio, revenue, EPS, etc. These are all terms you're going to want to get familiar with. And then there is qualitative research, which is more about judgment. 
a judgment on how strong you think the management team is. What gives them a competitive advantage? How strong is their brand recognition? These are soft, non-quantifiable things, so they are quite hard to collect and measure. You can't give them a number. It's a lot about listening to your gut and really trying to get an understanding about the people that are driving that business forward. The challenge here, however, is that the board of directors are unlikely to want to sit around a table with you and let you interview them. So it's lots about reading articles and scouring the internet here. In my opinion, the best form of research that the average investor like me and you can do is to think and act like the customer. Let's say you've done some quantitative research and you've identified a hotel business that seems to be making a really good profit, has beaten estimates three years on the trot and has a really low level of debt you might be thinking it's worth considering investing into. But when you actually book to stay in their flagship hotel, you find the booking system on their website almost impossible to use with loads of confusing options and misleading costly extras. And when you call through to ask for some help with your luggage, you get a really unhelpful rude urchin on the end of the phone. That might make you reconsider your investment. This is the beginnings of combining quantitative research with qualitative research, and I do really think they are best used together. A strong management team with a proven track record, great numbers, and a product that customers love, then you really could be onto a winner. If you've already got a portfolio that you've started to build, another consideration ought to be where does this new stock fit in with your overall portfolio? If you already hold a load of travel and leisure companies, then adding another hotel business might not be the smartest move for your portfolio. You might like to look for something completely different that's negatively correlated, meaning if the leisure industry has had a really rough time, like say through something like a lockdown, then not to worry, you've got a manufacturer of toilet roll in your portfolio as we all start to hoard it again. Therefore, increasing your diversification and lowering your risks, making it easier to navigate through the ups and downs. Remember, no one has a crystal ball. There are no sure things. The best place to get started is with a trading two-on-two -two practice account where you can play with imaginary money to your heart's content. Get all those bad investment decisions out of your system until you're ready to put real money on the line. Get familiar with the app, take a look at the watch lists, most popular US stocks, UK stocks, then maybe take a dive into the 212 hot list. Take a look at the leaderboard, risers and fallers, play some trades, watch the performance. Have fun, you can't go wrong in here. Oh, and don't forget to look around at what your fellow investors are discussing in the community section. When you're ready to buy your first real share, we have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do exactly that. A link in the description below. The thoughtful investor has a story behind every decision to purchase a stock. Make sure you have one. <laughs> Give the video a like if you learned something and please subscribe to the Trading 212 YouTube channel with notifications turned on so you do not miss any future uploads. And if you're feeling really kind, could you do me a favour? Could you head on over to the App Store or Google Play where you can leave up to a five-star review for the Trading 212 app just to let others know how good you think it might be? Thank you. My name's Tom Morgan from That Finance Show. I will see you on another video real soon. Happy investing. Wow.